the Lord over all. All oh, power belongs to you. We give you all the praise. We give you adoration. We give you all the honor. We worship you this evening for you're worthy to be worshipped. You're worthy to be glorified. There is none but you. Yes, Lord, be exalted forever. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your great love. Thank you, Father, for your great heart towards us. We honor you. Thank you for the gift of life, for the gift of salvation, for the gift of the Spirit, the gift of righteousness. We are because you made us to be. Yes, Lord, now we say, if the Lord were not on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us alive. But you, Lord, you have led us to triumph. We give you the praise. Christ, our strength. Christ, our victory. Christ, our redemption. Yes, Lord, from the rising of the sun to the going down, the name of the Lord be glorified, be exalted forever. You have done all things well. It is marvelous in our sight. Be exalted, our God. Be glorified, King. Rema brasoto remredia shimerim redidosa. Prenosa brananda bradeko satem redidosa. Hamaruja baruza gadenga gadela brando tapranidos. Yes, Lord, we worship you. Be exalted forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A very good evening to you, wherever you are following us from. Uh, those that are already live on Facebook and those that are already connected on GGVFM, I want to specially uh, welcome you as I pass my special greetings to you this wonderful evening because this is the day that the lord has made we are rejoicing and we are glad in it if you can see me and you can hear my voice you are a living testimony and that is the doing of the lord it is marvelous in our sight therefore everything that has breath ought to praise the lord yes if you can hear my voice you are alive you can be sure that God has done wonderful and great things. He deserves of the praise. Hallelujah. This is Bishop Patrick Karyukin, great gospel visioners, coming to you live on this uh, evening service. Remember that uh, this, the whole of this week from yesterday, we are having this wonderful evening service. We call them equipping services. And uh, we shall continue all the way to Friday. And thank you for joining us. Please, those that are joining us, I want to appreciate you. I want to be uh, to let you know that I fully appreciate your presence on this service. Very, very important. Please share with your friends and share and share and share again this broadcast so that you and I, we can be able to reach many people and be a blessing to them. Make your comments and then share and share. If you can host uh, the watch party, go ahead and do it. It is a blessing. I see that people are already in on the net. I see my son, dear Mutaule Jr. Uh, Kelvin, uh, very, very powerful. Thank you, son. I see Patrick Atobu, my son. You're watching from Meru. Gertrude Kagendo in Lovington, Nairobi. Thank you so much. I see my son, Pastor Martin. You are getting blessed in Laikipia. I see James Munene Wajohi. You are saying you are being blessed in where? God bless you all the more. Glory to God. Glory to God. I see Anne Waithera. You are watching from Nakuru. Thank you. And because you always follow and appreciate you. May the Lord bless you in Nakuru. Keep you safe. I see Emma. Emma Murethi. You are following from Meru. I can see Emmanuel Mugambi. Aha. Uh -huh, Aha. Uh -huh. Washira. I can see Washira. Denix. All of you, God bless you. I see many of you, Peter Getonga joining, and, and all of you that are joining, please, thank you so much, and share, and share, and share, and let's pass this gospel across uh, beyond our territories to be a blessing to others. We are still praying and believing God that um, the Lord is in control, and the Lord has won this uh, situation, and he has given us victory. We are declaring our victory. Uh, over the whole situation we believe that there shall be a testimony now very very important these uh, teachings uh, these evening services we've been looking on the place of the grace we've been talking about grace 
the whole of this uh, from last week and we are going to be talking about it the whole of this week and actually the whole of this month and the Lord is helping us to see dimensions in grace very very important and for those maybe that are joining us na wale ambao natusikia katika radio na maybe unasikia somo hili kwa mara ya kwanza when we are teaching about uh, grace we say that grace has several dimensions and there is a side of grace that we are calling the saving grace the saving grace is very important because it is a grace that makes a non believer to come to the kingdom it is the goodness of god that makes the worst of all the worst of all the sinners become a saint in the kingdom it is a grace that washes our sins and, and brings us and makes us to be sons of god and we get saved by grace and that is very important that grace is actually ratified on the sacrifice that jesus made or jesus is the one that availed this grace by the sacrifice that he made on the cross the finished and perfect work of Christ on the cross avails the grace to us. And this saving grace is very important because it is the one that changes everything about our relationship with God to be what we are supposed to be. However, after you are born again, you do not stop at that saving grace. You go deep, deeper to the other dimensions of grace. To the other dimensions of grace hallelujah you go to the other dimensions of grace now we've been saying that grace is God's kindness that that avails the blessings of God even to the people and and deserving and you need to move on so that you can be empowered in the kingdom and especially to becoming all that you are supposed to become and in order for you to live a victorious Christian life. Now yesterday, we talked about um, the different levels of grace. We talked about um, grace is not, um, great, grace is not one thing. Grace is relative. We can be in the same calling, in the same operation, but different graces. Therefore, that means when you're in different graces, even the results and the impact and the influence will also be different. Bible talks about more grace. Bible talks about great grace. Bible talks about abundance of grace. Bible talks about manifold grace. And indeed, the scripture talks about exceeding grace. Exceeding grace. All these at different levels of grace it is the same grace but has levels has dimensions and it will be very important for the christian person to understand because anything in the kingdom of god operates by good understanding you realize that where we do not have good understanding we do not enjoy to the maximum and grace, as we are speaking right now, it is one of the areas that has even developed a lot of controversies. Some people may say, okay, I, I, I believe in grace. I don't have to do anything else. Because grace has finished every job. But you need to understand that if you stop at that point, you know, when we are talking about the saving grace, you can do nothing. You do not work it out. You do not add anything to what Christ has already done for you to be saved. The grace is sufficient. The grace is enough to save you. But if you are talking about other dimensions of grace, like Paul would say in the book of 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10, he said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Hmm. This is a grace that makes one. I am what I am by the grace of God. And he said, the grace of God that was bestowed upon me was not in vain. He says, I have labored more. I labored more than they all. 
Yet not I, but the grace of God that was upon me. So we see the grace that Paul is talking about is not the dimension of salvation. It is not the amazing grace that saved a wretch like me. He has now gone beyond that one. It is the grace that makes him to bear fruits. It is the grace that makes him to have impact in his calling, in his field. It is the grace that makes him to be a man of success in this life. So after you are born again via the grace, you need other dimensions of grace so that you can fulfill your assignment, so that you can be all that you are born to be, and so that you can be successful and be a person of impact. Hallelujah. And that grace or other dimensions of grace, you don't just stay and say, Christ did it, everything. I'll be showing you that term. There are many, many other things that we need to know. Very important. Hallelujah. So, for you to move from one level of grace to another, yes, it is God, but you also have a responsibility. Because we see Paul encouraging, and I'll be saying that, the church of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, he is telling them, See also that you also operate in this grace. It is something they were to do something. The grace of prosperity. He, he was challenging them that you guys, the church of Corinthian, uh, Corinth, you church of Corinth, you need to learn something from the churches of Macedonia because they have displayed the grace of kingdom prosperity in that they were in the practice of giving they were so much into giving and you know the grace of God that was upon them and Paul is challenging the church of Corinth telling them now you see also you also do well in the grace of giving oh hallelujah and that is a grace that makes any believer to prosper if you just get saved and say, I got saved by faith, I don't have to do anything, it doesn't matter, I don't, it is not about works, and then you stay like that, and you are not a giver, the grace of kingdom prosperity will not operate in your life. Because he said, he was telling them that you ensure that you operate in this grace also, the grace of kingdom prosperity. So please understand what, when you are talking about the different dimensions of grace. The grace of salvation, the grace that saves a sinner, you cannot do anything, you cannot add anything, you cannot, you are not responsible other than just believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. The grace comes at the same time you are accepted to be a son of God. But after that, you have to be involved. For example, moving from one level of grace to another. Now today, we want to look on what I'm calling are growing in grace because for you to change your level of grace you have to grow bible talks about growing second peter chapter 3 verse 8 second peter chapter 3 verse 8 but beloved be not ignorant hallelujah let me get it properly for you glory to god let me get it down wow 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 Makataba sheke telebredias. Second, Second Peter should be Second Peter chapter three, and then verse eighteen. But grow in grace, exactly. Second Peter chapter three, verse eighteen. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory both for now and forever. The first part. But grow in grace. So grace is something you can grow in. Grace is something you can increase. Because when you are talking about growth. We are talking about increase. Just like a child is born. But the child to be. When a child. This boy is born. He has to grow to become a man. You may never see the full. Characteristics of a man. As long as the human being that is born remains a baby, 
man, a baby man, that is a, a, a young a baby man, this boy, if he does not grow, he will never enjoy the full characteristics of a man. In fact, a baby boy and a baby girl, they may behave like the same until you check on their sexes. So you may be thinking that both are the same. But as the boy begins to grow, he begins to show the characteristics of a man. So growing in grace will help you to fully maximize or fully manifest and fully enjoy all that God has availed in his amazing grace. Oh, hallelujah. So grow in grace. Do we have some Christians that since they got saved, the amazing grace of salvation, they are stuck there. They are not now growing in the other dimensions of grace. And that is why they are, they are wondering why things are not happening. Why their Christian life is not enjoyable. Why their Christian life is a defeated one. Why, why it appears like the hand of God is not anywhere near them. If only we can keep on growing in grace, then we can change the levels of our grace that we enjoy. Remember we are receiving from his fullness, Jesus Christ. Actually grace is Jesus Christ himself. Grace is a personality. It is Jesus himself. Bible says, John chapter 1 verse 16, and of his fullness have we all received grace upon grace. So we are talking about growing in the Lord. There is a way you grow, you begin to manifest greater and greater grace. Oh, shakata bagada. So let's begin somewhere, please. Let me give you something before we pray. Then we shall continue tomorrow. And on Friday, we shall be doing Holy Communion. So how do I grow in grace? Number one, you grow in grace by faith. You grow in grace by grace. He says in Romans chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Amen. Verse 2 says clearly there, I repeat, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace. So you access this grace, the other dimensions of grace, by faith. We access this grace by faith. By faith. Your faith is paramount. Determining what level of grace you are going to enjoy here on earth. Imani yako ni ya muhimu sana kumanisha ni kiwango cha aina gani ya neema utakayo furahia hapa ulimangoni. Your faith, your faith, we access this grace by faith. Now grace can be said to be God's hand extended towards us for goodness. Grace can also be described as God's hand extended towards us for goodness and faith is our hand extended towards the hand of God in trust so grace is God's hand that is extended to us grace is God's hand extended towards us to do us good now faith on the other side is our hand extended towards God's hand to receive in trust. That's very important. That means even though God has availed his grace without the faith on this other side, then that grace will not be manifested to the person. To the, to the person. You will need faith on this side so that the grace of God can be manifested. We access this grace by faith. The greater your faith, the greater the grace. They are directly proportionate. The more you increase in your faith, 
then the greater the grace you will enjoy. Hallelujah. Now remember, at one point we are also saying that grace is simply God's help. For example, all the heroes of faith, as they are recorded in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, all of them, they received God's help, which is God's grace, because of their faith. Because of their faith. Because of their faith. Now, his grace offers, God's grace offers God to us and all his blessings. Oh, Rabbi Kaya, that's powerful. Yes. God's grace offers himself to us and all his blessings. Then our faith accepts God and all that, that is called his blessings and receives God's grace will offer God and his blessings to us I hope that is coming out clear now God's grace will avail or offer God and his blessings to us then our faith on the other side they will accept and receive God and his blessings in our lives that's why you cannot be a man that is endued with grace if you are not a man of faith. In fact, even salvation itself, you access that grace of salvation by faith. That's what Hebrews, to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 has said. That you've been saved by grace through faith. Through faith. Even the grace of salvation is accessed through faith. So is every other level of grace must be accessed by faith. So grace will offer God and his blessings. And then our faith will accept God and all his blessings and receive them. So faith is very important. And show me a man of faith. You will see an engraced man. So when we say, oh, no, no, I don't have to do anything. No, you have to do something. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. You have to believe. Number two, how you can grow in that grace. Jambo la pili ambalo itakufanya ukaweza kuendelea kukoma ama kuongezeka katika neema. It is a knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. Knowledge of God. With every increase of knowledge of God, there will be an increase of grace operating in your life. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Jesus, our Lord. And of Jesus, our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So grace will increase by the knowledge of the Lord. Not just knowledge. Now people don't perish for lack of knowledge. People perish for lack of knowledge of God. Because many people have so many other kinds of knowledge. It is lack of knowledge of God. Yeah, people have knowledge of science. People have knowledge of technology. People have knowledge of many other things. But when people do not have the knowledge of God, those people can even perish. My people perish for lack of knowledge. What knowledge? Knowledge of God. Now, grace will increase or multiply because you are a knowledgeable person. You are getting to know God more and you are getting to know Jesus more. That's what the Bible is saying. That grace be multiplied unto you. According to the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Very, very important. Very, very important. That's why Paul, a man of grace, when he speaks about grace, he, talk, he talks about and this man, he talks about the grace that made him. I am what I am by the grace of God. And he said, I even overtook others. I labored more than the others. How? How did he come to a place of grace so much 
This is a man that did not even walk with Jesus face to face, hand in hand. But how comes he came to a place of this great knowledge, grace, that he was able to labor more than others? He says in Philippians chapter 3, in Philippians chapter 3, he says, verse 8, Yes, doubtless, I count all things but loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them, but done, that I may win Christ. Then he says, that I may know him, that I may know him, and the power of the resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made confirmable unto his death. So Paul is giving a priority in the knowledge of God. He says, I'm pressing. Every other thing is like dying. It's not important. And you know who is speaking. Now you need to know that in terms of uh, being a Pharisee. And Pharisees were not simple people. They were the most honorable people in that uh, society of the time. Most honorable. They were the PhDs of our time. They were very, very respected. Now he says, I count everything as done so that I may know him. I want to know the Lord. I want to know the Lord. I want to know the Lord. By his increase of knowledge of God and Christ, there was an increase of grace upon him so much. So much so that this man, he had access to things that are not even permitted for any man to speak them out. He speaks and says, 14 years ago, I know of a man, speaking of himself, he's believed to be himself. He says, I know of a man who went to the third heaven and this man was shown things so powerful, so great, so divine, that there is no mortal man that is permitted to speak them out. Hey! Look at that. That is amazing grace. That is too much grace. That is so powerful grace. But this is a man who said, I count everything as done. I count everything as done. The man that was in grace so powerfully, He's a man that pursued the knowledge of God. Today, we, we can increase our knowledge of God by increase in God's word and by the help of the Holy Spirit. Every time you spend time in the word and every time you fellowship with the Spirit of God, you are getting to deeper dimensions of knowledge of God. You will know God not just as you are taught. You will have an intimacy, an experience, a personal encounter with God that brings you to a place of higher levels of grace. Higher levels of grace. Higher levels of grace. That is, number two we have said is knowledge of God. For the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. See how they are empowered. The empowering thing towards exploits is the grace of God. Because we have also said grace is the help of God on an individual. So they, by knowing God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. Number three, how you can increase or you can grow your grace level is by humility. Is by humility. By humility. Bible is very straight. James chapter 4 verse 6. James chapter 4 verse 6. It says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud, but giveth more grace. He giveth grace to the humble. James 4 verse 6. God resists the proud, but he giveth grace to the humble. So your level of humility will determine the level of grace you enjoy part time. Now, God 
and pride because the opposite of humility is pride. They never meet. He says, God resists the proud. I think you need to know. The word there resists as translated from Greek. The word resist there is a military term which means to oppose. So in other words, that verse can read like this. Wherefore he saying, God opposes opposes the proud. He is opposing the proud. He is fighting the proud. In fact, it has the meaning of one fighting to resist, to fight. It's a military town. Can you just imagine? If God was going to oppose you, you're finished. I've always said, if the devil is the one opposing you, thank God, you can go to God. If it is a man that is opposing you, thank God, you can still go to God. If it is a system or whatever thing that is opposing you, thank God, you still have somewhere to go. But if it turns out God is the one against you, where do you report God to? Whom do you report God to? Where can you take him? God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Do you want to move from this level of grace to higher level of grace? Then you need to walk in humility. Now, humility is not something that God does for us. I've had some Christians pray like this. You know, lack of knowledge is, is really costly. Sometimes you may hear somebody praying like this. Father, I come to you. I pray, give me humility. God does not give humility. Now, God will not do to us what he has asked us to do. Because there are things that God asks us to do. Now, he has asked us to walk in humility. Humble yourself before the Lord. Likewise, that is what he says. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. And that he shall exalt you in the due time. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. He, whatever God is telling you to do, he will not do it for you. Hmm, first Peter chapter 5 verse 6. If he tells you to humble yourself, he will not come and humble you. He will not come and humble me. And God is gracious enough. He will never ask us to do something that he has not enabled us. So there is a capacity, there is an ability in us, but he will not come and do it for us. So it is upon us to walk in humility. And humility is majorly manifested by our total dependency on God. Some people have an attitude that, anyway, this one does not require God. This one just requires me. Now, they don't hate God. They are not saying, oh God, I don't trust you. No, 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 no. They are not saying that. So, they are even Christians. They believe in the Lord Jesus. They are born again. But the tendency to think that there are some things we can do by our own abilities. By our own qualifications. By our own efforts. It can actually be a kind of a pride. So much so that God begins to resist. Humility is seeing yourself with the eyes of God and depending on him and coming to him and in total trust. Yes, Lord, what are you saying about this matter? Now, how many things have we not involved God yet we engaged in them? I want to start a business. I want to start a project. Yes, I know because I did business management, I can manage this thing. Because I did project uh, something, I think I can do this. I, uh, yeah, I'm a very knowledgeable person. I, I have my MBAs, my masters, my PhDs. Oh yes, I have an experience. My father was in this thing for a long time. And then we enter into the thing. It may be a manifestation of our own self-dependency. Uh, uh, very important. Very important. It was D.L. Moody who said, God will not send anyone away empty. But the one who is full of himself. 
He said, God will not send anybody away empty. But the one who is full of himself or herself for that matter. So if you are full of yourself, if I am full of myself, then God will allow me to go empty. But when I come to him, oh yes Lord, this one, I cannot do without you. You, the great I am that lives inside of me, I fully depend on you. I may have done it before, but even now, I still need you. Give me instruction. Show me the way. Tell me how to go about it. And it is about any matter of life. Whether business, whether relationship, whether finances, whether calling, whether children. We can show our dependency on him. And that is a way of humility. A way of humility. If you want to increase in the level of grace, we, you and I, we need to walk in humility. Number four, the last one that we pray. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Number four, it is boldness. 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 Boldness is key. Boldness. Boldness. Now, boldness is not speaking with a big voice. And walking like you are walking on springs. And putting your hands in that position. And rolling with a big voice. Ah. Now that is not boldness. Now listen to this. Spiritual boldness. Now boldness is the ability to stand before God. Without a feeling of inferiority. Guilt conscience. Sin conscience without the feeling of condemnation. If you can stand before God without feeling those things, that is boldness. Boldness is ability to stand before the devil without fear or panic. That is boldness. You may be having any, any, any lady, no matter how soft skinned they are. He can stand before God boldly without feeling condemnation, not being guilty conscience, not being sin conscious, not feeling the condemnation. That is boldness. That is boldness. A lady that is soft spoken and shy in other matters can be bold enough to stand before the devil and say, devil, I fear you not and therefore I take authority over you and I command you to leave. That is boldness. Now, the natural man cannot have that kind of boldness. Mtu wa asli, mtu wa kawaida hawezi ya kawa na ujasili wa ina hiu. You have to be born again. Because Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. He says, the wicked runneth Fleeth when no man pursueth. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. So what makes a person to stand before God without feeling guilt? Without having condemnation? Without being seen conscious? Without being condemned? Feeling the condemnation or accusation that you are comfortable to stand before God? What is that that makes a person to come to that level? Remember, the wicked fleeth when no one is pursuing him. But the righteous are as bold as a lion. And there is no way to be righteous than to receive Jesus the righteous. And being aware that now you are a righteous man. Because the righteous one lives inside of you. And by new birth, he has made you the righteousness of God. Then you can stand boldly before the Lord without sin conscience without condemnation without accusations in your heart and you can also stand before the devil without fear or panic and tell the devil you have no place in my life and challenge him and rebuke him and bind him and cast him 
because you are bold. He says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us come boldly so that we may receive grace. Every time you are able to stand before the Lord, without guilt consciousness, without condemnation, and you're able to stand before the devil and without fear or panic, you can be able to access higher levels of grace, higher levels of grace. That boldness, that boldness. In Acts chapter 4, please look at this. In Acts chapter 4, we are told about Peter and his team. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. Now, what did they observe? They observed the boldness. Look at Peter. Look at that boldness. Look at John. Look at that boldness. That boldness does not come from a classroom. The kind of boldness. We know these guys. They are not learned. They have never been to school. But where are they getting this kind of bonus? Then they say they must have been with Jesus. Now these guys that were said to be this bold, look at them. Then we are told, then we are told in Acts chapter 4 verse 33. And with great power gave the apostles now, now before you go to that now, now look at verse, 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 verse that one Acts chapter 4 verse that one and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness and then verse 33 and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all you can see the connection of the grace the apostles commanded and their boldness. They were speaking boldly. Why? They did not have guilt consciousness before God. And they did not have fear or panic before the devil. And because of that kind of boldness, great grace was upon them. Boldness. That comes by the assurance that you are the righteousness of God. Which only comes by Jesus Christ in your life. And being aware that he has made you the righteousness of God. Then you can be bold. You can be bold. You can be bold. So four things that will usher you to next level grace. We have said number one is faith. We have said number two is knowledge of God. We have said number three is humility. We have said number four is boldness. And this boldness is rooted in your knowledge that Jesus Christ the righteous lives inside of you and he has made you the righteousness of God. You can bind the devils. You can stand before God. You can engage God in a, in a talk relationship, in a conversation. You can. And by so doing, you can have great grace manifested in your life. I have no doubt that you want to go to another level of grace. Greater grace, greater results. Greater grace, greater results. Exceeding faith, greater grace. And greater grace, greater results. Oh, hallelujah. Now, we will continue tomorrow. Please, I want you to follow. I'm not in a hurry. I'll be taking step by step. I want us to go step by step. And let me tell you, I, I was so, so much excited today. One of my daughters just confessed and told me that she has been so much been blessed with the teachings of grace, the way we are moving step by step. And we will go, and by the time we are done with this teaching, I see you understanding what grace. Remember, there is a saving grace that you cannot do anything about it. You can only believe. But the other dimensions of grace, you have to play a role. For example, we have talked about humility. 
We have talked about giving. We have talked about all these things that we are talking about, boldness and the rest. The Lord bless you. If you are not born again, you will need first of all to receive the, the saving grace that comes by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace is a personality. Grace is Jesus himself. Grace is a person and that person is Jesus Christ. You need to receive him because John chapter 1 verse 16 of his fullness we have received grace upon grace. You may be a religious person. Maybe you have always gone to church until Corona came. But let me tell you, going to church is not being born again. You need to receive him by faith. And you can do that right now. Bible says you just believe and confess with your mouth. Please, let me allow you or allow me to lead you to receiving Jesus Christ right now. You're not born again or you don't know whether you're born again. You don't know what has happened about your salvation. You are somewhere in between. Uko hapo katikati ujui kama kwamba umeokoka ama bado. Saa hii una nafasi ya kumrudia Bwana. Una nafasi ya kusimama na kumpokea Kristo. Say Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you died and rose again. I receive salvation. I receive forgiveness of sin. And I receive eternal life inside of me. You are the righteousness of God. I receive you. Now I'm righteous. I'm forgiven. I'm a child of God. I believe I'm a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Kama lazima useme kwa kiswahili, tafadhari. Sema bwana yesu. Siku ya leo. Na kupokea. Na pokea uzima wa milele. Ninakili ya kwamba. Ulikufa na ukafufuka. Nimekili ya kwamba nimeokoka. Nimesamehewa. Nimeoshwa dhambi zangu na mimi ni kiumbe kipya kutoka siku ya leo mimi ni mwana wa Mungu Asante Yesu kwa kuniokoa Amen I want to pray now for every one of you I know that you have received Jesus Christ wherever you are and uh, you will let you you will let me know you're going to communicate and let us know I know those that are following on Facebook the contact are there already you can immediately begin to communicate with me and let me know I'll continue praying with you let me know that you're there and you have made that decision to receive Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I thank you and glorify your name. I pray for everyone that has listened to this message. And I thank you for those that are online and those that have listened on GGV FM. Wote ambao pia wamesikia katika Radio GGV FM. Nasema baraka zako. Nasema kutoka siku ya leo. Neema yako. Ya kiwango cha juu ikaanza kudhibitika katika maisha ni mwao. Katika maisha yao ya kiroho, katika maisha yao ya biashara, maisha yao ya kazi na kule nyumbani. Neema yako ikaongezeka kwa kiwango cha juu sana. Na kutoka leo results na impact and influence and exploits will be reported in their lives. They shall not drag again. They shall not crawl again. I'm speaking right now. There will be a change in their lives. They will enjoy the grace of God like never before. I rebuke every power of darkness and every force that have been trying to pull them down. Kutoka siku ya leo, natangaza uponyaji katika mwiri wako sasa hivi. Wote ambao muna maumivu, I speak the healing power of Jesus Christ upon your body. From the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, in every organ. Pokea nguvu za mungu za uponyaji. Pokea uponyaji wako sahi. Tangia kichwa ni pako, paka migu pako. Pokea nguvu sasa. Katika mifupa, katika damu, katika tumbo. Pokea uponyaji. In Jesus mighty name. I speak a blessing over your life. You are blessed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please let me know. Umepokea mujiza. Umepokea wakovu. Umesikia uguzo wabwana, umebarikiwa kwa jia yoyote. Na, na tuchote kile. Maybe you need some more ministration. We are here to serve you because we love you. And that is why we have come your way. You can contact us through these numbers. Those wale ambao miokoka. Na wale ambao mkona testimony. Na wale ambao mgetaka bado huduma zaidi. Safari, safari com number 0706-127 or 127-910. 0706 
Airtel is 0733788188. Airtel is 0733788188. I'm really looking forward to hear from you. Ah, uh, tasikia ushuhuda wako. Mungu amekutendea mema. Leo hii utakuwa na usingizi mwema. Naomba ya kwamba unapoamkia siku ya kesho, ukamkia kwa neema kubwa ambayo itaweza kubariki kazi ya mikono yako we hautafeli tena ukaweza ku succeed kwa mkono wa bwana god bless you i'll be coming back remember tomorrow in the morning at 9 a.m. we be having 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. one hour we are going to have the bible study bible exposition we are handling the book of jude and we began today kesho pia ukue pamoja nasi katika facebook and then mungu wabariki sana thank you so much until I come your way, keep on shining. You shall live beyond Corona. In the name of Jesus. You shall not die of Corona. You shall not die of cancer. You shall not die of accident. You shall live to declare the praises of God. More grace to you. Amen. Glory.